everybody. Hello, my name is Bruce. This is another episode of Gatekeepers. Tonight, we're going to be discussing keeping in touch with your players on those bye weeks where you aren't playing this week, where you're not discussing what you're doing in game. But this is a very special episode because you, as a game master, you need to understand how to talk to your players and get under their skin and get them to feel like I wish this was a week we were playing. So without further ado, let me introduce my friends here. I have Jade to my right on camera. Thank you, Jade, for the OBS help. Shadow and Sun right underneath me. Howdy, folks. I have Connell, the Cigar DM. Thank you, dear. Prost to all of you. And to you at home, thank you so much for playing the home game. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you like what we talk about, or if better yet, you like giving us grief, go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. <clears throat> we take both. We have both types of music here, country and western. Okay. So, you guys know that I run a game every two weeks. Two of my players are here in this very panel. Do I irritate you enough about what we're doing in game, or do I? Do you want to be reminded more? Uh, don't I do the reminding there, Bruce? Not really. Well, the, the, the dungeon is it master, Friday? Is it Saturday yet? The, the dungeon master's always thinking, like, "Damn it, I woke up and it's not game day." It's kind of like when you wake. I mean, it's a normal like I, I equate, ladies. If you are, oh God, I know where this is going. If you're sensitive, just put it on mute for like 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Being a dungeon master is like being a male because when you wake up in the morning, you have a heart on. You wake up, it, it's stiff. It's it's right there. It's it's right there. It, you have to force it into the the position at the toilet to pee out what you amassed overnight while you slept. So, when you're a dungeon master, there's really not much difference here. You wake up and you're like, I want a game. And you're like, fuck, I got to work today. Or fuck, it's not that day. Or you're going like Bobcat Goldberg, God damn it, I'm, I want to just play a game. I want to play a game, yeah. That's not bad, Bruce. You're welcome. You like it. Um, I got to say that when you are a DM and you have a game that's in progress, and you have players that you bump into here and there in real life or online, you want to keep the game in their head, and you would be like, don't forget, don't you fuck me over. On game day, at game time, we're all together for this game. Because to me, that's why I put forth the work to pay rent and power and, and water and have a facility to do this because I want to game. And I know that sounds lame. Then you have guys like Max is like, that's why I play every week. I don't have to worry about keeping them excited or communicating to them on off weeks. You know what, Max? When you play weekly, I hope your game is a 10 out of 10, 10, out of 10 experience. I thought he hadn't played in like a couple of years, though. Mm, sounds like somebody's getting rusty. I think he runs the rusty venture. Well, the thing is that when you run every other week, you have time to prepare for a typical game of a, uh, any edition of D and D up to third. I will say that it takes you for one hour. You have eight hours of game that you can prepare for fifth edition. I don't know for fourth edition. I'm unconcerned. Nah. I, I, I don't. But I'm going to you do like eight minutes. What is it like eight minutes, Connell? No, uh, for fifth edition. Yeah. No, it takes me just as long to prepare for fifth edition that it does for uh, Pathfinder. It's not. I mean, the gameplay is quicker in, in some regards, but the amount of storytelling and making sure you have everything that's up to snuff takes just as long. As it does with earlier editions, don't be, don't let the, 
bullshit uh, fool you. It still takes time and effort to run a solid game, which falls on the DM, not the players and not the company. Okay. I'm in a feisty mood tonight, so. <laughs> That's good. You are going to be the person that we have pair up the dancers with Dan. If anybody needs to dance with Dan, we just have Connell in his feisty mood. Go handle that. Fat Gamer says, I could literally game master every single day, but I'm sure I'd burn out quickly. I tried it, and I had an eight-hour day job driving a big truck. <laughs> And I could last about two and a half hours and I'd start getting like, I'm getting like fatigued. I'm sorry. Cause I would have, I, I had a, I had a 10 year run of playing every day after work and it, it was, uh, it, it was the players that, that, you know, faded, not me. Mind yeah, you, we well, all had help back I, in the I, day, you know, we were younger, et cetera. I have to say, though, if you play more regular, the 30-minute, uh, sometimes up to an hour just to get the game started uh, time period does dial down because you just saw that person. Nothing yep. new has happened in uh, in a week or in, you know, in Shadows in, or every day. Yeah, nothing changed from yesterday. So it does dial back on, a, oh, okay, how long is it going to take me this week to get the game going because – Bob just got married. Jimmy got divorced. Dot, dot, dot bullshit. I, I gamed five days a week, and I ran two and a half hours, and after that I just started getting fatigued, and I'm like, listen, I got to wake up at 5. I get here by 6.30 at the Washington game store. I did that for about three and a half <clears> hours, <throat> and then we, we just stopped because we did <clears throat> Hey, hey, uh, Max, when was the last time you actually played? I, I didn't want to get it wrong, but if it hasn't been in like, you know, like a year or something, dude, get in a game. I don't care if it's, you know, what you consider a crappy game. I was in a great game with Rick Monday night, and even though it was only two hours, it was just him and I. Um, and if you haven't seen that video, go over to 28-millimeter uh, RPGs channel and check out the, the role-playing session we had. For two hours of Traveler, it was so much fun. So much, so refreshing these last couple of months to be a player instead of the forever DM. And, and all you guys out there who are in that, that forever DM mode, get into a game. Just just do it. At least It gives you a, a brand new perspective. You know, maybe, maybe not brand new, but you, you, you remember what it's like. And it helps you when dealing with the players that it, that you are refing, refing for so that you can kind of not necessarily have any sympathy, but you can at least, you know, see where they're coming from. I agree. Because players deserve no sympathy. I, again, agree. No mercy. Strike first. Strike hard. I'm going to disagree with your statement. Um shadow on it doesn't matter what the game is uh i'm of the opinion that no game is better than terrible game no i didn't mean a bad game i mean the genre okay um you know because unless there's a genre you, you don't like the game just get into a game oh. and play it well i mean oh. no, game, for me, no game no game is better than than shit game well, that only works in some. That only works in some areas, and I, I agree with gaming, because uh, for those who have sense of ears, bad sex is better than no sex. It's like pizza. Exactly. <laughs> we are drinking tonight. <laughs> um. So that being said, because I'm not going to play online, I'd rather not play than play online. You know, Myth Max, I'm going to tell you that playing online, it's not the same as in person gaming. I would much rather win the lottery and then go into the bankruptcy courts because I moved my players within 
a quarter mile of me on a ranch <laughs> where we all could live together and fuck their livelihoods because I paid for the goddamn land and the houses and the building materials and y'all are going to play here, goddammit. You're going to fucking sit here and I'm going to pay a thousand dollars a month to the goddamn power companies. Ah! But I would much rather do that than play online. If I have the option, I'm going to do it. Because I'm a dick like that. Um, I I don't have that option right now. So I run games where I have a couple people come on lot come in person, and the rest of them are states away. Sorry. Yeah, I'm kind of. To be honest, I'm kind of digging the online more, um, because there are certain things my friends would do that would not be allowed in this particular household. If you know what I'm saying, and if they want to blank the screen, do do what they want to do. Etc. And you know, coming into my house, making a mess, you know, getting the side eye from you know who, that kind of thing, um, and messing with my books and shit. You know, oh, what's this? You know, oh, let me check out this, and, and shit goes missing. And you know, only your friends steal your books. Yeah, friend. kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I discovered today another book that's missing from my collection. And I know I never sold it because I have all the other 12 books to the set, but and I know who's got it, and they probably tossed it 30 years ago. I uh, I didn't steal your book. Yeah, I, I know you didn't steal it. You can go hey, without gaming long enough, you'll take bad gaming. Maliki, that's true, because I had a miserable, shitty... A significant other in 2006 and she hated games she hated it and i gave it up for 365 let's try to make this work and i gave away the thing i love most which is sitting down to play stupid games where i push around figurines on a battle mat and i roll polyhedral dice and i love that a lot that's like my thing and i i explained that to the girl that i'm married to my first wife who's in the other room and i said listen I have stupid hobbies. If you want to watch Netflix all night and then go sleeping after you've drank some mid-tier shit-grade whiskey, go for it. I don't care. Because I like to push around little plastic figurines and metal figurines on the battle mat. I want you to do things that make you happy. Because I want to be happy and I want to do things I love. And she's cool with it. Which is like, yay! So when you find somebody that lets you do that, like, all of a sudden, all the horrible times you had trying to make good times with somebody who made you feel miserable, like, it feels like it all paid off because you, you had to you had to go on elbows and knees through a half mile of garbage that was up to, your, up to your eyebrows before you can enjoy good things. And then you find a gaming group, and that won't be the one you find that you keep. <clears throat> You're going to go through about six or seven groups of people which will have about three people from the start but you'll have about six people at the end that are like uh, you're my you're my tribe dude and that's that's how it worked for me and even weirder is that i have people that i gained with 20 years ago in my game now l says i'd rather not have a game than play stick your dick in a light socket you put L. You haven't had a game in twenty years. L. I Nobody know. wants to go that route. Nobody. Twenty years. I, I, L. I would much rather like if you're if I was in your situation at hospice, I would be grabbing like some cheap ass Yu Gi Oh cards off eBay and asking which one of the candy stripers knows how to play these damn card games because some enjoyment is better than no enjoyment. I would not stick a dick in a light socket, though, because that's not enjoyment. I thought about doing it to a toaster, though. And on the toaster, uh, that's for the sex thing, Connell. It's been over two years. I'm not missing it. <laughs> Elf says, Maliki, Vaseline is cheaper than condoms. You know, that is very true. And I repeat to Maliki, I have boomer moments, too. He's like, I'm a, I'm a millennial. 
It's okay, bud. It's all right. <clears throat> so Damn. I'm going to ask Connell first, and I'll just go to from Connell's shadow to Jade because Jade's on mute. Thank you, Jade. Because um, I know he's 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 monitoring a lot of stuff. But Connell, what do you when you've got your players? Like I know you try to play weekly, but you even when you play weekly, there's stuff you forget between game. What do you do to kind of get the the slap to the back of the head or smack them around a bit to like, hey, remember what we're doing? Remember why we're at the pit of inevitable damnation? Do you remember why we're at Stojanel Keep with DM James? Do you understand why that we are here at the Keep of the Borderlands, exploring the Caves of Chaos? I uh, kind of bribe my players in a sense like, okay, he remembers what we did last week. And the person who gives me the correct answer, uh, I yes, I, I saw it from you. You know, that's what you do. You, you find people that do things better than you, then you you still shit from them. Authors do it, directors do it, uh, cooks do it, so forth and so on. I, uh, I who, who did what? What did we do last week? Okay, cool. You remembered. Uh, give yourself an extra five hundred XP. Five hundred XP doesn't at mean much of anything, realistically on a scale, especially when it comes to mid levels. But you never know that you might be. Five, you know, the rest of the players there might be 500 XP away from live one, and boof, you got it. You know, so just kind of, just kind of, you know, sugaring the pot a little bit. And uh, I make sure I take notes. I and I take a lot of notes when I'm home. I make sure I know where everybody is at. I when I get home from the game, I dictate what happened that week on my phone. Uh, from my notes, then like the day before I go to DM, I will play it back. So I, I know what, you know, what they did last week. Cause no one's going to give me an extra 500 XP. That's how I keep, I keep most of my players in line. And when it comes to the women group, fuck, uh, I'm not going to say any names, but before I can even ask, there's always somebody at the table. Well, last week we did this, 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 and that, and we're taking on this, 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 and that. And it's not always the same person. It's sometimes it's somebody else. I'm like, well, you guys know what we did last week. So I'm pretty good when it comes to that. Does that answer your question there, Haas? It, it does. Um, what what level are your players at right now? Like seventh, eighth? Uh, the Rise of the Rune Lord, they are just got done with the Black Maga, so they're tenth level. And the women that are fifth level man the black Ma i'm gonna i'm gonna rant about the black maga for a second for those of you that never played rise of the rune lords there's a portion of it that starts off where like you've got to go to this town and stop it from being besieged by this giant monster and you go there and there's a kaiju attacking the town oh no well this monster literally should just eat the player's lunch but when we first started playing Pathfinder First Edition, it lasted about a round and a half. <laughs> it wasn't because the players' amazing die rolls, or even with their amazing ability to min max the shit out of their player characters, thanks to the Paizo forums. What it was was the fact that somebody, somebody figured out how to kite it, and they got it to run. And I think it was Russ, because Russ had pr pissed me off. And it tried hitting Russ a couple times. He was playing a stupid little halfling rogue. And I was rolling like fours and less. So it starts chasing him, gets away from the dike in the town. There's a huge dike in town, supposedly. If it destroys the dike, the town's flooded. So players have to get it demolished, reduced to zero hit points fast. And they were able to kill it within like... 10 seconds. It took nothing. It's like when you start that campaign, if you run it as it's supposed to be, the players should be like ninth, 10th, maybe. And here's Black Maga. She's a level 12th or 13th. She could she could cause somebody's death. Like a 16th level, she could easily cause somebody to die. But Black Maga, At the time, I will say that I did have seven players at the table, three of them with cohorts, 
So there was 10 juicy bodies flinging damage and hit points to them every round. And I will also say that a lot of people were involved with uh, the complete arcane and the, what is that spell compendium from 3-5? That had was it the spell compendium from three five the yeah that was literally the name yeah <laughs> everybody had that book every everyone it was like the Sears and Warlock everybody had that book too some people have two <laughs> hold on Jade keep it up keep keep it keep it that right there that was like the peak of three five ism because that was you weren't going to get another good set of books out of three five. I've got two copies because one of them is used so much it's quite literally falling to pieces. Awesome. Matt Barninger hit, enters a chat. Malachi, how you doing? Hey, Shadow. Hey, Conan. Hey, Jaime. What's up, guys? Malachi, In the chat. Over, you already missed a surprise round. It's it's fine. I, I, Malachi, I thought you were a millennial. I apologize. Didn't realize you were at the tail end of Gen X. I thought I was at the tail end of Gen X, but you're younger than me. It's cool, dude. I'm at the toe end of Gen X. <laughs> but you were born, Connell? I was born in 83, but uh, actually, what, what does Finn call me? He calls me a geriatric millennial because I hang out with nothing but Gen Xers. Back in my day, before there was a such thing as the internet. Oh, my God. I do miss Sean Connery. So, anyways, Jeremy asked us what we were drinking, so we all, all, all three of us showed our beers a second ago. Matt Barninger is like telling Malachi, I appreciate you surviving. It's better than the alternative. I'm glad y'all are here. Elle's like, I'm distracted by Charlene Theron topless right now. No, not me. I'm like, there was a lizard person that made it somewhere kind of trending for a second on the interwebs in the last 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, seeing how she che treats her children, I can imagine how she treats a, uh, a an actual man. Yeah, no thanks. Well, I'm not. Wait, you're 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 looking at it wrong. I'm not there to be, you know, for the long term. I'm there for the short term. Oh yeah, and out the door I go. Not even gonna touch that, man. Well, the thing is, is that you already had a rough week. Ma Madonna, at some point, if you were around to die. in the nineties, you thought at one point, like, oh, now she looks attractive. Like, because most of the time when you saw her, you're like, ah. Your penis would do this angry dolphin bullshit. Ah, ah, ah. And like you try to grab your dick, like, you want to masturbate about that? Ah. And it'd go. Hold on. Hold on, Jane. Jade, Jade, bring it back. Sorry. Uh, chat uh, uh, asked me about uh, this book because I, I keep it up behind me. Um, some good stuff in here um, for game masters, um, seasoned game masters, more than new game masters. I would recommend it for more seasoned. And the reason I say um, more seasoned is there are concepts that a seasoned game master will fundamentally understand when they're reading this, whereas new game masters um, may miss some of the the concepts. Um, but I would I will say that the book is broken down into simple enough terms so anyone you know in gaming can understand um, all the principles within. But I would definitely say more seasoned game masters will get more out of this than new game masters. Question: I got should more we, out of it. Should I, is it something I should put in my uh, library? Um. Yes, I, I would. I would recommend this to any game master because um, the, there are some tips and there's some some advice in here. Um, I've pulled you know from this book into the live streams before. Um, but I, I do it in, in kind of a, a roundabout way so people don't you know immediately recognize it. Um, would I recommend it to you, Connell? Uh, I wouldn't not recommend it. Um, I, th I think it would help you in, in many aspects. Um, okay. So I do, I do actually recommend this book to many, uh, like I said, seasoned game masters. Madonna looks like Mudkips, according to L. I think she looks like one of those Innsmouth people that you read about in the Cthulhu Mythos books. Soy, soy, soy based Jeremy tells me it's erectile dysfunction. 
Arbiter of Worlds is great books, according to Max. Matt Bryinger gives his uh, dates there, birth date, and his uh, sober date, which is awesome. Thank you, Jade and LOM. Malachi's like, I'm not much of a drinker. I'm an ex-smoker about four years now. Yeah, I had a cigarette about a month and a half ago. No, yeah, a month and a half ago. A friend of mine, one of my closer work buddies died. Happens. I, I mainly drink from low-tier pain relief. <clears throat> you know, there's a saying, the more intelligent you are, the more miserable you are. I'm always miserable, so I got to relieve the stress somewhere, so I drink. I have to look into this book. People are telling me about it. Cal, stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Catching on fire is not fun. I've been lit on fire twice as well. Uh, once from lightning, once from something else. And, yeah. Speaking of catching on fire, is there actually a good way? I believe my ex-wife is a witch, and it is that season to burn them, right? It, I, I would I would say try the drowning first. All right. You can get away with more with, with, with the carp that are in Powerton Lake. I would say you can get away with that more. All right. Dude, I caught a 44 pound carp out of Powerton Lake. He stood 12 inches out of the five gallon bucket I hauled him up in. You can see his big fat lips. Oh, it was great. My neighbors love me. <coughs> Too many bones, too many small bones and carp. I, 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 give, them, I give them my neighbors, my, my street pharmacists. Um, <laughs> anywho, so so I think, Max want to know about the gaming topic. And the thing is, I already asked Connell about this. But Connell does a weekly discussion with his gamers and a weekly game with his gamers. And that's, that's great. Shadow, how do you keep in touch with the gamers and how do you how do you keep the game kind of on the forefront of topics with all of you? Uh, well, besides the, the, the usual methods, I have two things that's sure to bring them back. And if not, uh, fuck them. Uh, one is cliffhangers. And two is treasure denial. They don't get the treasure till they come back. I mean, I may give them the treasure, but they're definitely not knowing what any magical properties are until the next time we play. I usually tell them that, you know, I got to roll up, you know, blah, 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 you know, see what kind of sword it is. Maybe it's intelligent, you know, always throw that one out there. And they're like, oh, okay, no problem, man. Because they know if I whip it out right now and go, okay, it's a, you know, just roll real quick or whatever, there's going to be no chance of anything special. They know if they give me a week to stew over it or till the next night or what have you, then they know there's, a greater chance of cooler stuff in the treasures that they got. Uh, mind you, they will find treasure, you know, maybe in the middle of the game as well. It's not always at the end, you know, that would be pretty predictable, but I usually try to, you know, leave them with, and if it's not treasure, you know, big clues or important, you know, story element at the end. So it brings them back along with the cliffhanger. Just those things is pretty easy. And and with you and Colin being both in my game, you guys both remember how we ended last game, correct? Yep, cliffhanger. Yep. Do those work for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's a little rough with a two week interval, but you know, I lately I've been, you know, getting into more more games. I'm I'm in almost three games a week now, so life's good. You know, you didn't always have that schedule. And I'm really happy that with the time that you have, you're able to actually put it to good use, which some people are like, oh, you should be making money during that time. If you're retired, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Retired, and, and retired isn't like a, I quit working for this one guy and I now earn money from government. No, retired I'm referring to like you don't have to worry about things because you have your expenses under control. You've brought 20 years now. And, and that's, that's, that's what I refer to as retired. There are other people I know that they like they get booted out of a job and they're forced on Social Security. So they're like, I've got Social Security, but I need like an extra six hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars a month. I'm like, you're not even retired yet. Stop that. <laughs> go get go get a job at Lowe's. They need they need people in, in lawn and garden, and they go get a job at Lowe's. 
because it's like a mile away from here. And now I just found out, I will say that if, for those of you in San Antonio area, one of my favorite neighborhood bars, docks myself, I don't give a shit, the former Highlander Bar now will be called the Beagle at the corner of Donroe and Fredericksburg. If you are a person that's a people person living in San Antonio and you are used to wait staff work and you can make money, I'm going to tell you, go to the Beagle at the corner of Fredericksburg and Donroe. Talk to Mike. This is my pump for the moment because seriously, the guy is asking for about 50 bodies to help him bring that bar to a new tier. All right. Now I'm talking to myself because everybody else is on mute. Thank you, guys. Jade. Hi. Yes, sir. How often do you run a game? Um. So there for a while, I was running games uh, probably once a week. Um, yeah, once a week for the longest time. Uh, here lately, I haven't been running many games. One shots occasionally. Um but when I would run those games weekly, I would be in constant contact, uh, mostly via text message with the uh, the players. Uh, this was before we, Discord really became a thing. This is before um, like Facebook Messenger became a, a really big thing uh, where our, most of my, my communication happens now. Um, but uh, I, that's how we, we would keep in contact, um, either that or email, because there were some that would prefer email because they would just be there waiting for them, um, you know, when they went and checked their email. So uh, things that I would uh, commonly do is, um, you know, Connell's already said it because he, he stole it from me. At the beginning of every session, I have five to ten minutes of recap and I say, OK, who remembers what we did the last time we were all together? Because I have my notes. I'm curious what they remember. Um, and in this way, you know, I'll even, you know, kind of drop hints throughout the week, you know, leading up to the game of, hey, you know, be ready for this, be ready for that. Um, you know, here's some of the things that I'm um, really looking forward to. Uh, or what are you guys looking forward to? Um, and then, you know, if they actually respond with what they're looking forward to, then I can kind of prep in that direction to make the game more enjoyable and kind of give them what they're looking for. Um, but again, I would start every, every session with the recap and my bonus XP was only like 50 XP, uh, maybe a hundred at the most, uh, depends on how much information they actually remember and how much notes they took. Um, but I wouldn't let just one person run away with it. I would be like, okay, that's awesome. That's what you remember. Does anyone else remember anything? And I would go around the table. I would give every person an opportunity to get that bonus 50 to 100 XP, depending on what they had in their notes and what they remembered. Now, it also helped that, you know, for a while, he had three of his players, all uh, two of his players living in the same house. That did help a little bit. <laughs> that, that definitely helped a little bit. Kind of miss those days and kind of don't. Kind of weird. I, I don't miss those days because uh, those days we were gaming, I think, every other day or every day of the week. Wednesday, and, Friday, and Saturdays. Yeah, I, I couldn't keep shit straight I between who was running what. But... Because I wasn't running with my notes. Yeah. Uh, the wife is doing okay. She's uh, gallbladder surgery was successful. Uh, occasionally she gets like stomach pains or whatever. Uh, that's it, It's just that like my choice of food has not really changed much. I will buy like a little bit more chicken, not much more chicken. And I, I really enjoy pork. So Sam's having pork on sale for $1.99 for a loin, $1.99 a pound for loins, or for $13, you get a whole half ham, or for $9, you get four and a half pounds of ham. I I prefer my, my thing is pork. So, yeah, I feel sorry for you, Jeremy. I really do. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Jade, when you're setting up your internet groups, you're using them pretty much the same way you use like AOL or Yahoo Messenger back in the day, right? 
Yeah, pretty much. Cal, every time that you have that happen, just go back to LFG over in Legion of Myth server. I'm pretty certain you're going to get picked up. I will help you out if need be. Uh, there's also um, reddits that you can go to that are LFG reddits uh, for yeah. like Roll20 and such. Yeah, I miss the good old days where you just took a piece of paper to the, your local game shop, you stick it to the wall with your phone number because you're dumb enough to do it, and looking for players running this uh, system, uh, this system. Please call me between these times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can still do that. You, you just get a uh, a discord server set up with a qr code generated uh mm -hmm. for that that discord group and they just walk up scan it and they're part of your discord and then they can look for group see that's too much sky uh sky net talk for me <laughs> um for me i'm always uh, like there's probably 30 minutes a day that i prepare gaming not painting figures but prepare gaming and I'll either stat out a monster or I will apply a template to a monster character or a NPC or I will draw a map out or I'll do a flow chart of how I want things to preferably go and then just, you know, have victory conditions over here. The flow chart will go halfway through the paper and it just like ends right there. But I have victory conditions over here because after a certain point in the flow chart, like I can't control what the players do. And you never will, ever. What you can do is you can visit and you can be members of various Usenet groups or, or email lists. And where I go with email lists, I tell people to always subscribe to Raging Swan Press. Creighton Broadhurst is somebody that everybody who runs a game, subscribe to Creighton Broadhurst. Because he gives out three pages of free shit a week. Three pages isn't much for all of you. You're like, no, I don't want it. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you that he wrote up a list called Contents of a Dead Cleric's Pockets. And I've only used maybe half of them. And each time I pop out one of those, the game will go between two and six hours into a MacGuffin red herring discovery phase of like, is this worth our time? And they will go down paths you didn't plan for, but in the spirit of the game, and Gary, help me now, I always would rather try to improvise an exit or improvise a way to get back on the preferred set of paths, flowchart, to where I can reroute the train to where the players will need to go for their thing. Even if it means me taking the game two or three sessions out of its normal way, and I'm not trying to steer the players, I run with a hex grid. When I say I run with a hex grid, I have an idea of how the game is going to be set up. I have these locations in my mapping, but atypically, when the players are going from place to place to place, the landscape's already set, they discover it, but it's the things they find as they traverse the hills and the marshes and as they go over, like, old, ruined, ramshackle bridges. That is what I'm looking for the players to, to actually find necessity in their life. And so when I say that, I'm giving them an option to follow up on things and to close certain uh, certain dangling bits. Like, it, it, we, we have questions about this. We have questions about this. Oh, we figured out this item over here belonged to this guy over here. We figured out this over here because this was stolen from that location when they ransacked the monastery. Things like that. And I want you to be, on, be under the impression that no matter what you do for your play style, it's that you give your players the option to make up their minds. You're not telling them anything directly. You just let them find all the clues 
and then you just leave it be. It, it, it's it's kind of like an art of uh, Limbaugh described it. God, I, I'm going to lose fucking Connell right now. Maybe Jade too, but Limbaugh was on Family Guy ten years ago, and Brian turned into a conservative dog. He's like, I'm a conservative, and yeah, there goes Jade. Well, <laughs> the the thing is, is that poor uh, Brian didn't get it. He's like, no, you can't give people all the facts. You can't. You have to give people enough breadcrumbs to lead them to discover the facts themselves. That way they can understand exactly what they've discovered here. But when you're leading them on these hex grids, it's just the same way as when you're dropping bits of knowledge in poli sci or when you're dropping bits of knowledge for business administration because if you tell people and you force people if you're if you're grabbing somebody by the neck you're like i say we are fucking doing this now they're not going to listen to you they're just going to fear for the life and piss their pants but if instead you just drop like a few nuggets here and there and let them make the footpath to the next next set of nuggets you give them all the things they need to assuage in their mind like hey We've we've cleared this path. This 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 quest is over, and it's the same way. Whenever you're dropping these hints online, because you're not gaming, you're you're spending thirty minutes of touching base with people. Hey, dude, I was thinking about your your character this week. Your archer would be badass if you would go for the blah 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 prestige class from three And here's a conversion for Pathfinder, or here's the way I see your character developing over the next few levels, and it involves these items here. Or maybe the sneak peek that nobody was wanting to discuss, but like, hey, Bruce, um, Gre- Gregory is a fighter, and all your other characters have kind of topped out because they've hit mastery of their weapons. What's Gregory get? He didn't top out as a master fighter at ninth level, did he? No, he didn't. He's going to discover high mastery. And then I drop that to him, and he's just going to go fucking ape shit because he's like, wait, I get more dice? Because that's the type of player he is. He just wants to fucking cause damage. I'm not giving Gregory the game he wants. The game that Gregory wants is the Night Angel Trilogy by Brandon Weeks. Brandon Weeks is a great author, but I have six people at my table. Six people who do not want to play a Thieves Guild campaign. Four or five of them would like to try it. Six people, I will now have four people. And then three weeks later, I have three people. So as a DM, that's a balancing act. You got to do things, which is why Gregory has two characters. He's got his Gregory, the big beater, the big, big beat stick. Then he's got Vladimir, the little sniper character. Yeah, Malachi, that... That I, I'm, you know, I, I'm telling you from truth. That was an old Family Guy episode, and and it explained a lot for people. And sad that Rush died last year, but you know, as much as like he irritated some people, if people listened to him, the education was there. They could get their free education every day for three hours. You have to put up with Rush's shit, but you got an education. Um, Elle's like, oh my god, Bruce is on cam. Yeah, I'm I'm on cam. Sorry, kids. Oh, I think if you should. I think if you host, you need to be on cam. That's my overall opinion on that one. Listen, the all hands network. Um, yeah. I, I I prefer working with miniatures, but I've, I'm hosting and running this show here on what would normally be Jade's time slot. But Jade's like, go ahead, you run on your channel, no big deal. I'm like, fine, I'll I'll be in front of camera for for at least the first part of it. Um, with with this though, it, it's a balancing act because you you have to kind of feed your players a little bit of info enough to get them canalized again. Like, oh yeah, we have game this weekend. We have game. What happened in last game, Bruce? Well, remember you guys were going up to the midway point in that bridge, and you went down first in the chasm below and stared up at it, and you're like, "This is this is stupid. The fuck is what the fuck is this?" And they're like, oh, "It's just over there." What do you mean it's just over there? The bridge ends. And then finally somebody looks at the bridge and the ambient light settings of arcane magic. And they're like, 
oh, there's a big fucking purplish aura there, and I think it's like a gate spell. What? 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 Goes back to the blue dragon's uh, uh, whore, so we can lose. Everybody, more thought, every, I get messaged that like three times. I'm like, <laughs> no bits of obsidian here. What was your obsidian at the blue dragon's hoard? Yes, there was. You guys didn't really look for it, but I made sure I tried to point it out to you. And then you guys went back up and you started crossing the bridge. And as soon as you put your hands through the gate, cliffhanger time. And then I filled in. Um, Man. Here we go. Is it just me or is it Winnie as fuck where you, over there where you at, uh, Jade? I don't know. I'm in the basement. Yeah, I'm hearing it outside my door. Oh, that's why it's supposed to be um, raining. And yes, Melike, I have uh, two doggos. I'll be, yeah, I'll be back here in just a second. I'm I'm currently exploring my uh, Discord to, to read you some information for Jade and for Shadow. Yeah, you guys emerge from the portal, and this appears to be one way because you put your hand back where you just came from. It doesn't work. Uh, you look around. You're on a big floating hunk of rock and earth, and you see bits of iron ore and everything, a little bit of magnesium. And Grimson is, like, on the ground, like, grabbing bits of soil and running it through his gauntlets. Uh, he tells you magnesium, iron ore, and earth. The chunk of rock you're floating on is about 60 foot by 30 foot. It doesn't drift a whole lot, but you can see this entire demi plane or wherever you're at is fairly enclosed and it smells like sulfur. Lots of rotten eggs, too. It smells like a lot of rotten eggs. Like, if you've ever been around an area that, like, is soon to combust into flame because of all the uh, H2S, like, that's what it smells like. And there's a rope, rope bridge leading off this hunk of rock. The surreal landscape reminds you of an ELP album or an ancient Cygnosis game cover from the 1980s for your Amiga game computer. So, I mean, that's that's the shit that I do. That's that's what I usually do for my game. Hola, amigo, como estas? Yes, the, the Cygnosis. Ah, yeah, uh, I love Cygnosis. And I will never, ever, ever not love Cygnosis. That was my favorite game company ever. Welcome to the uh, chat, Mr. DM James. Role play the right way. Follow to get basic. Wow. Thanks, so. Elf. Yeah, and Jade, do you have your doggos there still or no? Uh they're upstairs. Oh. They just went upstairs. Is there food upstairs? Yes. Okay. Being that they're huskies, I get it. Huskies aren't supposed to be food motivated, but uh mine very much are. Yeah. No, Huskies are actually not supposed to be food motivated. Believe I've, it or not. Every Husky I've met, it's food first, attention second. Mm. Every every Husky I've ever met is food. For, if you have cheese, like if you go to... The, well, yeah. <laughs> if, if you have their treat of choice first, like if you... If my panel and chat were to walk with me into the Night Watch games retail store on Blanco Road in San Antonio. And I always mention this because they are the 2019 Gamma Retailer numero uno in the world. They have a plaque for it. They have wood. For those of you that go to SN, you understand what wood means. All right. You go to Nightwatch Games and you understand why I said that. They have a big Malamute. They have a big Husky. The big Husky, he goes to whoever smells like cheese. If you just had a, a uh, sweet and spicy bacon burger, Whataburger, and it's got the Monterey Jack and the American cheese on it, and you have some get on your fingers, he'll lick you. He will lick you. It's a big, furry fluff ball that has a tongue that comes out and, it, like, caresses your hand until he's convinced it's it's gone. And then he leaves you because you obviously don't know what triggers his happiness. Yeah, that's, that's my big one. Yeah. That, that's what he does. What's your uh, big my, one? My little female, wherever she went, uh, she uh, she doesn't do that. Okay. But Granted, your dog, your male dog, will look at you kind of a, why are you here? When are you leaving? <laughs> Did you bring food? Yeah. Fuck yeah, off. My, my, 
Yeah, so, my dogs are like that. Yes, they've got cool. quite the personality. Anyhow. So for my gaming, what I want to do is I run every other week. And I want my players to refresh themselves about every three to four days as to what they're doing in game. If they're if they're interested in the game, there's there's a new opportunity to read stuff in the Terran Keld chat, and the players can get an idea of what Bruce is doing with this campaign. So I give them about a paragraph of stuff. I give them the the five basic senses. I give them some extra magic in, uh, information because some people can see the magical spectrum and i'd rather you ask me that there than waste my time on a server during camera time and wait you're casting arcane sight okay not a problem when you see with arcane sight this is what i give you blah 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 dm james is like connell looks like he's getting away with something shady Maybe so. Cal's like, so, Senor James, we in Telemundo. Our good friend from uh, Jersey, now now a relocated Florida man, Tommy and the Guinea Pig Collective. Uh, you see the little toe nibblers making their way across the screen there. And he's like, greetings. And if anybody here likes uh, guinea pigs, and if anybody here is a Florida man and likes to discuss 80s toys, subscribe to this guy right here. Let me go get his link the channel because he's getting ready to to break free from the bastards of comcast that's a that's a feat he's gonna get it and this guy he he does some amazing chats he, he has really good streams and they talk about they'll focus on like one or two items in a toy line and then he'll focus on it give you the the dimensions, the the what about isms, how many it sold, and he'll stretch like for me, I was a diaclone guy. Diaclone, diaclone. It was the generation one Transformers prelude, where you had Trailblazer and a couple other Transformers, but then you had like this 12 ship Voltron esque assembly ship that was really cool to have. And I had one of those. And my Lego men, Lego spacemen and him uh, would go on a lot of adventures together when I was a young kid. And I really enjoy listening to Tommy talk about the toys of the 80s and 70s and 90s. He focuses more in the 80s because that was like the golden age. And for those of you that understand that, like you understand what I'm talking about. We're talking about Transformers, Thundercats, G.I. Joe Generation 1 Sunbow. We're talking about Inhumanoids in the latter part of it. He mask, he mask, mask, visionaries, Chris, uh, God, centurions. <sighs> so, I, 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 to say I'm a fan of Tommy and the Guinea Pig Collective, and and not only that, he's a nice guy, and you'll understand that when you start listening to his chats and his channels. He has his people there. Uh, he, he, he's like, I'm just having fun talking about what we love, Bruce. Too kind. Well, the thing is, is that we all loved Star Wars back then. We all loved He Man, and they hadn't had it around long enough to ruin it. Thank God. And by the way, I'm slightly offended by that statement there. Uh, Which one, uh, James? Do I look like the person, the type of person who does shady shit? Uh, I, 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 I engage in shady shit. As a jet lord, it's my duty. <laughs> Don't give me those judgment eyes. <laughs> hey, you're only in trouble if you get caught. You know, I uh, Voltron Voltron ship <laughs> was my jam. DM James, that was what I watched the most from the Voltron. I. I, I, I would not watch Voltron Lions unless it was forced upon me. I would rather watch Transor Z than Voltron Lions. Or even the 1970s cartoon uh, Space Battleship Yamato. Yeah. As you, as you just saw up, up on my up, uppermost shelf, there's a, a decade's worth of Lego Bionicle and Hero Factory um, that was my son's toy of choice, and damn, was I jealous. 
that was some cool ass shit he got to play with and I got to, you know, pay for and take hundreds and hundreds of photographs of when he was done with every project he needed a photograph and I don't know what happened to him, but all the boxes are up there. The Legos are downstairs. And if he ever wants to sell it, Because that's something you pass down to the kid. When he has kids. Okay. <laughs> Keep scrolling down, Bruce. <laughs> uh, Voltron, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, those are my jams. Yeah, such awesome franchises. You know, and I... I was that kid that I wanted the Dungeons and Dragons. L, uh, what was it? LBJ or uh, the 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 D and D figurines, like where they had uh, uh, Cal uh, Kellenvor and and the the guy with the bluish helmet, with the black eye, black face, and red eyes. I wanted those figs. I really did. Jade looks like he runs on runs numbers for the Irish mob. Yeah, he he kind of. I'll never tell. Well, what figs did you say you wanted there, Bruce? But no, no, no. Don't don't even think about it. But I when I LJN was the people that made Dungeons and Dragons D and D War Duke, and yeah, everybody's like popping in War Duke. It was War Duke. Don't remember it was War Duke. I do remember it was War Duke. I apologize. But, yeah, I think I have most of that stuff somewhere. Yeah, they actually had a, a playset, and I never knew they had a playset for D and D. I think I used to have. War Duke because my grandpa thought it was a toy from Mad Max. Props to your grandfather. Yeah, my grandfather was a great man. I I have mainly said everything I wanted to say within the first hour. And I figured that it would take me that long to go from like tangent to tangent. Here's what I want to do. Tangent, <laughs> tangent, here's what I want to do. And this is how you run a DD game because, like, your players, they have ideas, and you run down these bunny trails for like 30 or 60 feet, and you get rid of the bunny trail, and then you go back to game. Okay, this kobold attacks you, this goblin attacks you, uh, DM James is running B, uh, B2, you're fucked, and uh, this, this, uh, the, the, the master of the keep, he hates you because you're hitting on Melanie, and that's supposed to be his woman. So don't you ever hit on Melanie. <sighs> Yeah, Jade's a mick to do it. Malky is like, there's an adventure called Hearthstone that used to use the toys of figures that started out in the Shady Dragon Inn. They were statted out in the Shady Dragon Inn. Yes, I remember that. It's been a while, but fuck. Um, mm, mm, is there mm. anything anybody else wants to pile onto this? Because between game sessions, be it if you are doing a week or if you're doing every quarter, what do you guys do that you haven't said yet to connect to your players to where you're like, okay, remember you're in this game room. Here's here's the setup. And do you do you message them? Do you phone call? I, I think a lot of us are preferring Discord or Facebook groups. Uh, somebody will say MeWe. Somebody will say in the chat MeWe. And I appreciate you. I really do. But when Google got rid of Google Plus, that was when I, I stopped giving a shit about that, and I went over to Discord. Discord has almost everything I want until I found Gilded. Gilded, I love you. I don't use you enough, and I know and I, I know, sweetie, we're, we're going to be together soon. Neck has been killing it. Yeah, yeah so I um, I've been taking to Discord. I, I I'm very much a digital age person. Um, you know, I'm I'm right there at the cusp between like Gen X and and millennial. I was I was right in that time frame, but uh, you know I've grown up. You know when the internet became a thing. You know I remember before the internet was a thing. So, um, but I've really embraced digital technology for running my games, for uh, organizing, for basically holding all of the content um, of my games. Um, and so because digital media just makes it so easy to reach out to people and to be able to communicate with people rapidly. I mean, we live in the digital uh, communication age. So 
being able to say, hey, um, you know, is everyone available? And I only have to post that once in a Discord group, and I can immediately see the responses. Or even um, it was a Facebook uh, Messengers group. You know, you can immediately see who has seen it and who has not seen it. Um, and then you can, you know, go one step further and message the person directly if they haven't seen it yet. Um, so yeah, I, I really did embrace the digital era as far as gaming goes, um, more so than some of my other friends who are my age, um, and even for some that are younger than me. Um, but you know, I keep all of my uh, game notes on Google Documents. I keep all of my uh, XP tracking in Google Sheets, so I I never have to you know worry about missing numbers. Um, I know where the the players are XP wise. I know. Typically, I'll, I'll look at the character sheets and I'll make notations and I'll add that to uh, my Google documents um, just to know what their capabilities are and see what their benchmark numbers look like. So I know I'm not throwing things at them that are over the benchmark or over what they can't handle. Um, but in that, I will uh, either, like I said, message them on Facebook, message them via Discord if that's where the group's at, or... Um, I've even gone as far as to send emails um, through Google Sheets. Like, um, I'll know that, you know, hey, you guys are like 40 XP away from leveling. Um, you know, you were probably going to level next session. And uh, I'll do this from the Google Sheet that has all of my uh, XP numbers on it. Um, and I'll, I'll just email all contributors or all, um, uh, I can't remember what it's all called. Uh, basically, anyone who's part of the, the Google Sheet document, and everyone will get the same exact message. I can say, hey, be ready to level up, be thinking about what you want to do, and uh, you know, go from there. Just to make that leveling transition faster so we can keep going at the table and not have to stop for the evening to allow people to you know, get their levels. So, Okay. Connell, do you have anything to add on that? I mean, kind of where I'm, uh, I'm not computer illiterate, but I'm computer illiterate. I know how to use it. Um, hold, hold on, hold on. You're saying that, but yet you're using a phone and a tablet at the same time, right? I can't do what Mike, I can't do what Jade does with. Uh, 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 you are using the tools that you have to the best of your ability. And from what I'm seeing, you're running three games a week, right? Yeah. Plus, you're playing in mine every other week. Right. So, uh, I mean, I get where you're going with. Um, I just keep, I, you know, I have a piece, of, I have a, a college binder and lots of pencils uh, to keep notes. Um, but when it comes to, like, people that I game with, it being... Uh, the female, uh, the whole female party, the Amazonians. Uh, no, I know that's not a real word. Or it being the Monday group, or it being your group. I normally okay, Max. Um, I Thank normally uh, I just call. I mean, I'm old fashioned enough where I rather talk to somebody uh, via the phone, even if it's you know using. Video chat. We'll do. I'll do video chat because there is no expression in text message. I, you know, something's going on. I don't quite understand what's going on. The text messages are dry. But when you talk to a person in person or on the phone or video chat, you can get a full idea of what's going on. So I prefer to call them or video chat with them. Uh, I talk to uh, the Monday group. Every Monday, we, we we talk like maybe a half an hour after game, so everybody is ready to go for the next week. Because there's three DMs, and every Monday is a different DM. So it's either mine, uh, Josh's, or Finn's uh, campaign, and we just got to make sure we get our boats in order as DMs. So the players, which may be us, know what's going on the following week. Uh, when it comes to the shop game, I will make sure I call uh, not as not so much call my players 
but I have left my Facebook Messenger uh, contact information. If they have any questions, I do send out a group chat saying, hope everybody's ready for the next game. I do use the technology at that I am comfortable using. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I'm, I haven't said no to, hey, you want to go out for a beer? Or let's go grab some dinner. And I'll just talk, hang out with the, you know, hang out uh, with one of the players. So I prefer more of the human touch over the digital touch. Plus, I don't believe in Skynet. I, uh, I, I, I subscribe to the machine. I really enjoy using Discord or Gilded to get video chats going on whenever I'm not having to stream. Having to stream. I know that sounds stupid, but that that's something that we don't have to do that. But streaming is a way for like you to have a conversation, with somebody that you don't mind sharing with the world, like what we're doing right now. Right. And I, I prefer like our gatekeepers and our table breakers. I don't mean to pair those two together, but I look at those as like, those are game aids for other GMs. And there's plenty of people in this chat that have ran stuff and we're talking about things they already know, but there's a lot of people that they don't think of things when they're in the thick of things. And if you can give somebody just a pointer or like a, a position them to be in the right direction, that will probably do more good for them than what they realize at the time. It might take them a day. It might take them a week. But they'll be like, Oh, I, I really did get helped out by what Connell had to say about that. But Fuck, I didn't realize my feelings are going to get hurt for the fact that, like, it's okay. Um, Tommy, you don't have to be grateful to me, man. I, I, I want you to get back on and doing your live streams on Monday. I love your fucking work, dude. And he's got a really good show. It's, it's earlier than mine. So typically I'll be in the bathroom listening to him and his panel talk if he has a panel. But they're, they're just talking about franchises from the 80s. For me, that that is like just just heartwarming soul candy that I get to nibble on before me and Janet rip a movie to shreds. And this last week, for example, Janet hated my movie selection because it had all the right things but a good director. And the movie kind of sucks because of that. And it really broke my heart to hear her say that. But in my head, the movie's a lot different because I wrote the I read the book that the movie's based on, and so I blend the two together when I experience the movie. I'm also thinking about shit that happened in the book. I'm like, oh, that's a lot better. But it's right. not a real the movie. movie. Was, what? The, ser the movie was about a serial killer that was on the subway, right? Yeah, the Midnight Meat Train. It's not a serial killer. He's a guy that works as a butcher by day. And then he goes and grabs people at night, bludgeons them to death, hangs them on hooks. And at night, he puts them in a, in a train ride to go feed various monsters that has been have been in the city for years great I, am i actually have to say, take some time to watch it <laughs> i would thought it was just a serial killer that was on the subway i'm like eh. you've never seen it i'll send you the, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the link for it bro it, it's been out since 2008 it's on like 12 different services that i know of right now <sighs> now you don't have to go to this extent now this is this is how much i have accepted the digital age this is a okay. Google Sheet that I made specifically for the Wrath of the Righteous uh, campaign. And each color change is a different module. Okay. That said, it's it's all, it's everything, you know, every module, every room that is possible to be discovered. You know, the vast cavern, abandoned campsite, so on and so forth. And I have on here, you know, whether they looted that area or not. So when I say yes, it... Uh, Let's see here. Not that one. Let's see here. The rooms. So this is another tab of it. And this is literally every single piece of loot throughout the entire module set. All of it. Every piece. Every gold. Every item. Everything. And it's all broken up by room listing or room number. And its value and everything. So that when I say, yes, this room has been looted, it appears in a 
master loot list that all the players have access to. Again, you don't have to go to this degree. I went to this degree because I was bored as fuck during my lunch periods at work, and I I needed something to do. So this is what I did. Um, but you know, I also have uh, was the road so far, and this is every story XP they earned. You know, I, I put an X by it if it was uh, a mythic thing, um, you know, and then kicking the door. This was every encounter that they had throughout the entirety of the module, as well as their XP uh, values listed. Um, and, it you know, it goes on for quite a bit. Some of them I didn't name, but, you know, eventually I got smart and named them all. But again, you know, th this is something I do for my games because... I don't want there to be 20 rods of or 20 immovable rods because everyone wrote down immovable rod on their character sheet when they looted, you know, a cavern um, because I've had that happen. Um, you know, this is also this is where I keep track of all their XP. This is their entire total XP value and what the character level is in mythic tier. So I have all of that data tracked on my end so i i know i always know where my players are what they're doing and you know what their capabilities are you know i track all of that uh that nonsense so to say again you don't have to go to this degree with you know your games this is just something i did um and it worked out i do miss higgins <laughs> thought you might um i miss higgins yeah. i miss role-playing as higgins uh, you, you might you might think it's Pride Parade, but it's just color organization, so I can keep track of what module we're in. I knew that the blue module was module six, the green module was module five, red was modules one and two because I didn't start this until module two. You know, um, <laughs> did they serve lunch at that seminar? Um, no, no, they didn't. Um, but you know, this is because I knew and understood Excel and formulas within Excel uh, tables and cells, so I could bring that knowledge into uh, Google Sheets, and I was able to just code everything so that I am not an accountant. I'm not. I'm actually in the engineering field, not not an accountant. I was worried um, to see if I could talk him into a uh, tax law because I think he'd be brilliant at it. Because <laughs> fuck's sake. But, uh, but no, so I, you know, I, I had all this knowledge from uh, Excel, so I brought it into Google Sheets, and I, I wrote formulas so that I could um, just do, uh, rep, you know, repetitious formulas throughout the entire thing, and then, you know, I just hit one button, and it does 40, 60, whatever things all at the same time, and I don't have to do anything with it anymore. I don't even have to tell them what the loot, you know, what the loot was. They can just see it. It's available to them. And then they can go put their name by it in the master loot list, and it, you know, takes it off that list and puts it into their personal list in their own Google spreadsheet that I made for them. Um, again, you know, Dungeon Masters, you don't have to do this. Um, but if you want to do this, there are tools and resources available to you uh, through Google or, you know, some of the other, like OneDrive that you can share all of this, you know, stuff with your players. And again, you know, I've, I have fully embraced the digital era in gaming, um, you know, but that's, that's just me. So it looks like uh, Bruce might have stepped away. So what about you? What do you do, uh, Shadow? To keep when you were uh, running every day for ten years, how did you keep your care players motivated into coming in the next day? Just, uh, just make a good adventure. To be honest, just keep them wanting more. You know, I hate to sound like a, a crack dealer or anything, but just you know, once you've got them hooked a certain point, you know how to throw out things that are going to bring them back in, in the game, in the, it, it, the, the story, as it were, just keep doing that. You know, back when I was running that particular campaign, you know, we were playing every day. It was a, it was a given. Everybody was going to show up. That's what we did. We all did it after work. It, it was just, it was a tradition, you know, whatever you want to call it. This is what we did after work every single night, except 
I think Sundays because everybody needed Sunday to to you know get ready for Monday because Monday whatever you know psychologically you know people have that you know oh it's Monday you, even though they partied all weekend and every night after work you know we were gaming and and doing the things and just you know read the room and and and, and make each character what the hell make make something for each character to to want to find want to find out you know what's in it for me kind of thing you know why am i you know coming back go ahead shadow uh, uh um, just, this up a little too early sorry about that yeah yeah I, it's like i have no idea what that is i, I you know like connell it's, it's all list. about it's it's all about paper and you know i, I didn't need to keep track of, of all the treasures that they had found. Uh, none of them had ever thought of cheating like that. Maybe, you know, fudge their die rolls, but, you know, it, it really didn't matter. I, I tended to give out a lot of treasure over the course of, you know, each year, as it were. And a lot of times we, we were playing a, a really high-level magic game where there were magic shops, so getting, you know, having the ability to buy potions and things like that and, and other magic items was just not a big deal. It, it was the, it was the, the custom personal magic items. That was, that was kind of my thing. I, I, I made more magic items that, that no one had ever heard of before. But then I gave out stock items, you know, the, the limousines of folding and stuff like that. It, it was a, you know, a high tech, high magic game. So it was just just keeping them, keeping them, you know, involved in the story for each and every character. You know, sometimes one character will will take the spotlight for whatever reason, and you you really got to avoid that. Give everybody that that chance, you know, to shine, and make sure that they just they have a reason to come back. I would like to point out though. Um, I, I in in times that that uh, games fell apart, uh, sometimes there can come a point where where you know bothering the players too much. I, I've seen this in, in a couple of my friends' games because uh, they they would start to come to me. A lot of them would you know ask me questions about the games they were running, and he, again with reading the room, sometimes bothering the players too much is 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 actually a bad thing that they you know uh, dungeon masters too a lot of dungeon masters i know um they're like uh, we'll talk about it at game day you know if you have any questions we'll bring them up at the beginning of day to game day don't bug me during the week I, I don't have time and you'll get a crappier you know result just wait till game day not only that because then you'll have witnesses around the table so to speak Instead of, you know, you're calling your DM on the phone. Hey, what about this? He's like, uh, I'm busy at uh, that. You know, give you the short answer instead of letting you and the dungeon master sort of, sort of, you know, work it out in front of everybody. Unless it's those, you know, secret, you know, schemey, roguelike activities. Um, again, sometimes that, 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 that needs to be done away from the group. But, you know, too much contact between games can sometimes be a bad thing. Not always. It, it's kind of rare, but because I've done this so long, I have seen Dungeon Masters just get burnt out by the constant barrage of questions. Uh, one of my old GM friends, he passed away a long time ago, but he would constantly be, you know, trying to get advice on, you know, uh, of literally, you know, how do I get them to stop bugging me between games? That's a catch twenty two, mm -hmm. and it's um, a rarity. That is a rarity. I say that's a catch twenty two. Only in frequency is you know I I don't know a better term for this, but whenever you start like a new relationship, uh, there's this thing called a honeymoon state. Yep. And if you ignore it, it goes away, and people lose interest in each other. Gaming for a gaming table is the same way. I really don't want to use that term, but I can't think of any other. That the, they have attraction to the game. 
And if you keep buffing them, not you as a person, but if the DM keeps buffing them, no, no, wait till, uh, you know, I'll talk to you when we get the game together. They'll lose interest. Why should I play in his game if he or she is not, keep, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, keep, um, what's the word I want to use? Keeping interest in me wanting to be in his game campaign. I get having a busy life, having kids, having work. But it takes less than five minutes to say, huh, okay, let me think about that, and I'll get back to you. Show some kind of courtesy, and they'll be courtesy back. You know, there's a reason why we should use good manners. Now, the question was posed um, in the chat of, I make, you know, do I make my players look at that, you know, rainbow madness of, uh, of color? And the answer is no. Um, the file that Bruce had up there um, is actually what my players see um, for the loot list. Like this is how they actually, this is the, what they open and see, you know, Connolly, you remember this. Oh, yeah. um, they just click on this and they'll click on one of these uh, hot links to the loot list. And it'll literally open up the loot list and what's available in that specific uh, tab of the list. And, you know, I've got all the different tabs open and, you know, they can list sell the party, uh, you know, who actually has it on their person, its value, its uh, weight. Because I, I'm an asshole GM. I track weight and I know if you're encumbered or not. Oh, I can verify it. Yes, I, I, I am going to be an asshole about that because if you're carrying two tons of material and you don't have the strength for it, well, you're not going to move. Um you know, because I want the party to, well, sell things. I want the party to not carry all of this excess junk with them. Yes, I have it. It's all available. I'm never going to cheat my party as far as what's available for them to pick up and take with them. Um, and, you know, for some of you, you know, might recognize the color scheme. This is the 3.5 color scheme of, of their tables in all their books. So, I mean, this is what my players see. Um, you know, and then I can just go back to the master list and, you know, this is, this is every module, every break, uh, broken down part of the modules that had loot in them. Um, and it, I even give them access to their, their own bags of holding. And this is everything that was in the bag of holding. Um, you know, so yes, did I go to the, you know, the, the whole nine yards? The answer is yes. You know? Um, yes, I've heard of character sheets. Uh, they have their character sheets, um, and you know they they can write stuff down. Um, but this was a way to, to track it, so that even when players were away from the table, they could be claiming items from that list anytime, anywhere. They all they all had access to the Google do documents. They all had access to the loot list on their phones, on their home computers, and I could email them directly from this list. I could just go uh, down here to email, email collaborators, and I could email all of them. And I'm going to cancel that. Um, but from there, you know, I could say, hey, there's unclaimed items in the loot list. Does anybody need any of this stuff? Am I to presume it's all to be sold? You know, do you want me to give you the, the breakdowns of the numbers so that, you know, you guys have, you know, spending money in town? Um, and this is this was just one of the ways I communicated in a way with my players is you know they would um, be able to actually see like my communications. Oop, uh, I cancel that. Um, they'd be able to see my communications from here and be able. Oh yeah, there's unclaimed items on the loot list. Hey, does anybody want this item? Does anybody want that item? And um, does, doesn't Roll20 do that? No. Roll20 doesn't actually, so far as I know, have loot lists like this. Not yet. Um, supposed to be building them. As far, like sure. I said, so far as I know, but I haven't touched Roll20 in over a year at this point. Because um, you know, when this game ended, I just kind of stopped. <laughs> I thought Foundry does so. that. Foundry does. Foundry might. Foundry, Foundry might. does, but my um, life is Sport Foundry, so I can't use it. 
Yeah. So this is this is just the the way I found worked for me and my group was, you know, so that they all had access to things. They didn't actually have to sit there and ask me, hey, you know, you know what what was in that room again? And I didn't have to go open up a module that was literally falling to pieces. I have pages of this module grouping that are literally falling out because that's how much they were used. Um, so I didn't have to damage them a second time or third time or 20,000th time to go looking for this loot because I had already done all the hard work. I pulled it all out and made it available to all of my players. Um, yeah, so I mean, like I said, this is this is just how I communicated with my players as far as loot went. Um, this is also how I would uh, gen up or um, uh, drum up, you know, excitement for the game you know they knew the game was coming up and be like hey make sure your loot list is fixed make sure you know you've got everything that you wanted off this because i'm going to assume it's not on your person if your name's not by it and connell can attest to this if your name was not by the item on the list you didn't have it on your person i uh yeah honestly it's not exactly the way i dm uh but it is a very glass house way to do it because everybody knows what everybody has there's no there is no hey i got this when did you get it type scenario it is a very um see-through uh, i can't think of the right word and yeah, I thought it was very- weird i think it's an it's i'm not saying that the players i was playing with whatever you know screwed over the other people or the dm but i could definitely see using that like in a shop type scenario if i get a constant crew because these are you know as much as i like to think they're you know well i don't think they're my friend they're 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 my customers so i you know where it's a difference between having a house game and a shop game i think that would be an interesting program to work for uh use for a a shop game and there is no questions Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer L on this one. Uh, so yes, the players were paying attention. They did write stuff down. Um, but if they missed something, because I don't spend a lot of time on the loot that gets dropped. Um, you know, I, I might say, okay, that this is what the person's, uh, wearing. And I just list everything that's on the, the person's, you know, character, anything that wasn't used in the combat or, or whatnot. Um, you know, and if they overlook things, I've marked it that they overlooked it and it's, it's not going to be added to the loot list. Um, but in this way, they didn't have to be like, oh, Hey, do you remember getting that, that, that globe of sunlight yeah when did we pick that up they just know when they picked it up they don't have to ask me they don't have to go reference their you know the page they may have lost out of their notebook uh, or used to, to it was dated and as dated and everything yeah i already have all that stuff there for them you know it's <laughs> it's there they don't have to go look it up it's just available you know and that that's a, a lot of on me, you know, I, I was willing to go that extra mile for my players um, to provide them this tool, to make this tool for them to use. Um, some of them liked it. Some of them didn't. Some of them didn't understand it. Um, you know, and yes, you, you know, you are right. They should be writing things down on their character sheets. They should be taking notes. Yes. Some of them do. Some of them don't. So. Oh, the other me, uh, Real quick, it's weird because so many players I, I've I've uh, refed for didn't want the other players knowing what they had, and this wasn't just because they were thieves or assassins or or evil or anything like that. They just always wanted to be able to pull something out, you know, in a pinch to kind of show off or grandstand or showboat or whatever you want to call it. They would like to you know, have that air of mystery. When they went shopping, they'd write their things on their list and not tell anybody what they got. And always, you know, especially, you know, like healing potions and things like that. They'd be like, well, you know, let the cleric heal me. And if he runs out, you know, yeah, of course I got a couple of healing potions, but that's his job. Or, you know, I've got, you know, invisibility this or, 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 you know, things like that. And they just, for whatever reason, they just didn't want, everybody knowing you know it's like hey joe use your this and joe would be like oh man i'm saving that 
Well, you guys ever run into that? Yeah. Even with that, let me let me uh, uh, speak. Uh, let me say something really quick. Two things: uh, a uh, your bot smasher is not working because we got our first player of the night just popped in. I saw that. And second, Sorry, ball, I, I can't see it because I'm no, no. On that, big being a player in that campaign, trust me, I was still pulling things. Everybody knew what I had, but I was the archer who did stupid shit with his arrows. No one quite knew what I was going to do next. So you could still have that momentary aha, and the rest of the table was like, you did what with what? You know, you might have all the ingredients to make, you know, whatever, but unless they actually can read your mind and know what you're going to do with it, the what you're wanting is still there. Does that help? I suppose, no, just with the, like the list that, that Jade was showing, um, they wouldn't want other players to to know what they had and, and then, you know, kind of guilt them or force them into using something that, you know, maybe they had other plans for. Possibly. What, what are you going to say uh, there, uh, Jade? So while the players knew what um, they'd taken from as loot from the encounters, I didn't actually have their, the stuff that was on their individual character sheets, the stuff they had written down. Like, I actually didn't know what was on their character sheets uh, because they all had their own character sheets. And this was a Roll20 game. I could go look. I didn't care. Um, so the only things that that list had on it was list or was items directly from the module, uh, directly, you know, pulled straight out of, out of writing, you know, straight out of black and white text. That's all that was on there. Um, and I did that for transparency from me to the players, you know, to, to prove I'm not going to cheat you out of anything unless you actually miss something or do not complete one of these encounters. You will get literally every ounce of XP, every loot, every, every copper piece if you are willing to go find it. But... As you find it, I will add it to the list, and I'm not going to, you know, play shell games with it. You will see everything, all of it, all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's why I did it. Um, but as far as like what individual players had on their loot lists or the loot sheets, that was actually private to them. Like they could, uh, as they were going through the loot list, putting their name on it. Yes, you could see who claimed it on their. Uh, you know, on the master list, but unless you were willing to spend hours looking at that master list, because there were, I think, uh, probably somewhere around a hundred thousand different lines of data on that master list. So unless you were willing to go tab by tab by tab, looking at every single item and who claimed it, you wouldn't actually know who's got what actually that came up several times was, Hey, does anybody have this item? And they'd look at the, the list and be like, you know, cause there was also a uh, lost baggage claim where there was stuff that had no names by it. It's like, Hey, did anyone pick up this item, you know, from the lost baggage claim? Um, and then they could say yes or no, or they left it or they sold it. Um, you know, so it wasn't so much that they got to know what was on everyone else's individual loot lists or, you know, private character sheets. They did never actually see that. It was only the master list that they ever saw. Uh, real quick, Omen, because I was running a decades long evil campaign. Uh, that probably is uh, the, the simplest answer I could give you. Well, Plus, I, I was running for the most part. My main group were a group of people that had been friends uh, longer than I even knew them. Uh, I met them. They'd already been gaming and they were looking for a new DM and we became friends back in the day and are for the most part, 90% of us that are still alive are still friends. And, you know, I don't know about your friends, but you know, my friends are the kind of friends that will, that will give you a whole bunch of crap. Okay. A whole, you know, constantly making fun of you, giving you a hard time, but when the chips are down, they're there to back you up. No questions asked, you know, <laughs> you know, for me, you know, you like the old joke, you know, if your friend's got a wood leg, you, you know, you kick it out from underneath them and then you help them back up. I give this man right here so much shit. 
But to be fair, he gives it right back. That's a test of friendship. When your friend can uh, rag you relentlessly, mm -hmm. there comes a point where you're like, dude, enough. And you just stop. There's no hurt feelings. You go, you know, yep. share a beer. Then you can start giving them shit for the next half an hour because they know they have it coming. Yep. That's the way it should be. All right. Connell, uh, let's start wrapping this up here. Uh, I got everything I needed to out of this for my channel <laughs> and my questions. Uh, does anybody need to dovetail onto this with this stream, or are we going to go with a different direction for for the next cut topic? No, I'm I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I, you, you guys, uh, you know, probably remember what I said earlier about this topic, and I think we covered, you know, as much as you know. Unless people out there have some questions, um, now you know, you know, speak now or forever hold your peace, because I don't think we're going to come back to this one. Not for a while. Anytime. Not for a while. So <laughs> that is a great that is a great yeah. suggestion there. Uh subscribe. 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 All right. Uh, what's the next style? I have no idea what the next uh next topic so, is. So next week. Um so this uh, is actually DM James suggested in our Discord uh, master to master discussion. Uh, for the nineteenth, we are going to be discussing. It's a trap. Traps and all things. Uh, our you know, our panel will come up with how we use traps, why we use traps, when we use traps, um, and I will be helming that discussion. Um, and any of the masters of the game within the Discord group are welcome to join. Uh, always, of course, the gatekeepers are, are welcome to be there. Um, if you are not already subscribed to the Discord, um, Bruce, if you wouldn't mind uh, posting a link into yeah. your uh, description. Um, and, you know, join the Discord, join the discussion, you know, suggest some, some topics. And, uh, yeah. Which, which Discord? Jade, I apologize. This will be the Gatekeeper's Discord. Gotcha. Here we are. I think you have a permalink somewhere. Yep. I... This was my baby for a little bit, and I thought about it. I'm like, no, Max should do better. And hand it off to Max, and he hands it to you. And I'm like, okay. As long as somebody gets into it. Shame level, first at 10 the next morning after waking up next to TRP. You Navy guys know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's called a kind of ugly, uh, ugly where I'm from. Yeah. Um, Jay, do you have anything coming up here? Are you going to be doing any more uploads of your Beyond the Door? Uh, no. So Beyond the Door is complete. Um, it ended with the players succeeding. Uh, there is a... Uh, a secret ending you could probably write into there where instead of them, you know, being able to get out, you know, and survive and whatnot, the headcanon might be that uh, they wake up in the mental institution where they are residing. Okay. And that just happens to be the same manner. <laughs> um, so it's yes, a unfortunately, I'm... Uh, unfortunately, I am currently still working on other content, but uh, Gatekeepers has me a little bogged because I'm doing a lot of research, uh, pulling every episode of Gatekeepers ever done by literally anyone into one master list on my channel. Um, you know, anyone who wants to copy that into their channel, feel free to do so. I will be updating it. I'm also pulling together a Google spreadsheet. I know, right? I, you know, it's not how I you just didn't get them talking about this. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm putting together a Google spreadsheet of all of the episodes, the date they were done and who ran it uh, as well as what the topic was. So I have a, an idea of what has been covered, what hasn't been covered, and what can be covered. So, a lot of a lot of uh, background work for me, but it's fine. Okay, that's the main thing. I've been working on uh, getting the characters set up for the the playthrough we'll do here before the end of the year, and uh, four hours of game, you four or five with me, that'd be great. I hope you guys enjoy it. 
Shadow, I know you're on limited time sometimes. Like, I'm looking at just getting rid of my StreamYard premium subscription and going with the 20 hours a month they give me. What can we expect from you over the next 20 hours to the rest of the month is over? Well, um, as you may or may not know, I've been doing a uh, roughly like a 10 to 20 minute uh, video every every day on why we play the game. And uh, I'm hopefully going to start running with that, you know, uh, every day. I didn't do one today because I had a game review and then I got sucked into a, a live stream. But uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing that on, on, you know, solo with with, you know, big boy topics and. Uh, things that you know, I don't, I, I don't need my son, you know, involved with, you yeah. know, uh, you yeah. know, basically, you know, the, the the different reasons and things that have come to mind why, you know, at least why I still play this game after forty some odd years, and it, it's, um, I've got a couple more slated for this week, but obviously, I'm still doing videos with my son. We're doing a craft video tomorrow after Table Breakers, which I think I'm hosting. Uh, uh, how to breathe new life into low level monsters. And then Friday, Friday, right. I have uh, a review of the wilderness survival guide for AD and D and hanging out with Max on Friday night, Saturday, hanging out with you guys in the, in the game. And then I'll be doing a sci-fi chat, hanging out with Connell Sunday, doing another painting video Sunday, and then starting all over again and, and see where it takes us. Okay. So basically about two to three videos a day. Uh, I'm working toward uh, trying to get to that 500 subs because I have got a mountain of plastic miniatures and sealed boxes that I want to give away when we hit 500 subs. And I've got a mountain of Kickstarters coming in before Christmas or somewhere around Christmas, depending on what happens in the next couple of months with shipping and things like that. And I really need to, um, you know, give back in, in a physical way because so many people out there have been very cool to our channel sending us stuff. We've, you know, received thousands of dollars in merchandise from our sponsors. And, you know, it's time to start, you know, paying it forward and, you know, clearing out some space because God knows what, what Santa's going to, you know, put under the tree for us this year. Understandable. Sorry. Understandable. Um, Tommy, you take care, buddy. I look forward to seeing you again soon and being on stream with you again as well, because you're you're just a good guy, man. And I, I know things have been rough for you lately. That doesn't exempt you from the prayers we've been saying about you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Janet from Another Planet, my Monday night co-host. She's uh, she's not close to Tommy, but she watches him quite a bit, and she'll ask me questions about Tommy and a lot of the group that he hangs out with, which is it's nice to see how everybody's networked and such, and people that use Discord a lot, you'll jump from one Discord to another, and you'll see how everything's kind of networked in, but Tommy's a generally individual that's just, you know, unless you've really gone out of your way just to directly affect him in negative sense, uh, generally... The other 95% of the time, he's he's in a pretty chill, pretty positive mood towards people. This channel that I'm on is uh, monetized, and that means nothing to you or should mean nothing to you because I don't want you guys to, to worry about me. I, I've got a job tomorrow, and I'm happy about that. Uh, with that being said, um, if you want to follow me, Saturday, we have a game on this channel. And I want you guys, if you enjoy the games, to uh, to follow us and to see how how we can positively uh, provide you with entertainment. And that that's generally what we want to do. Man of War is like Bruce, wake up and then go to sleep. Yeah, I know. That's fatigue. That's all it is, man. Appreciate that. I I, I do appreciate that quite a bit. I should, you know. And I hope you understand that. I, I you don't have to do that. That that's your decision. Um, what I want to do is I I want to get people more connected. Like I, I just see myself as being somebody who can connect other people to. Maybe I can't give you the things you want. Maybe a friend of mine, or I know a guy, sort of thing. And if nothing else, the internet while we're 
doing this while we still have the ability to use the internet. I, uh, I think that the best tool, the best usage for it is for you guys to be able to communicate your thoughts. And sometimes I don't have the answers you want, but somebody I know does, or maybe somebody in my network has something that you really need. So that's, that's the main thing. Saturday, we're having an escapism or vacation stream for our game. And that starts, I'll be getting the crew together at 1230. We will be popping online shortly after that. Uh, we will be doing something tomorrow night with Mr. Shadow, and he will be doing a stream talking about a secondary way to uh, use and abuse those favorite character monsters that you love so much and reintroduce them into a campaign and threaten your characters, your player characters with mortal peril. And I think I think that's something that a lot of people forget about. And we'll probably talk about Tucker's Kobolds for a little bit. And that that was kind of like the the entire instigator of that entire the Kobolds are murderous little bastards. You know, it was it was a Dungeon Magazine 127 where we start to read about that a little bit more. And it was just a kind of like an offhand comment in an editorial, but for fuck's sake, every time I go to the store. I start talking to people about, like, what's your favorite character to use, or what do you like about the game? Uh, after about 40 minutes, they'll bring up something like, did you ever read about Tucker's Kobolds? I'm like, yes. And at, the, at that point, it takes me 40 minutes to get there. At that point, Tucker's Kobolds has taken over that conversation, and we go into the various ways that we have ruined our players' ambitions for several weeks, if not the entire campaign. And I, I think that's something that's kind of fun. Uh, Shadow will be helming this talk tomorrow night, talking about our favorite monsters being used when you're well above the appreciable level where they should be a threat. So I hope you guys show up for that. Does anybody have anything else before we decide to take off? Well, if I get to have like... A quick few minutes to say what well, I got going on. Yeah, uh, what, what would you tell us about what you do? <laughs> well, as you said, as everybody's basically said, you'll find me tomorrow with Gate Geek, uh, with Table Breakers. Uh, and we'll be talking about sh what shadows bring to the table. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Friday, more or less the same. Uh, Saturday, hanging out with Bruce. All this has already been said. But Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I want you to get uh, come join us at 4 o'clock. But before you do, I want you to go outside and look at the stars the night before. I want you to use your imagination what possibly could be up there. Because we will be reviewing the 1990-era movie, Fire in the Sky, based on a true story. One of my favorite sci-fi alien abduction movies back when I was a kid. And boy, did it scare the hell out of me. So that's what we'll be talking about this coming Sunday. Other than that, you know where to find me. My name is Cigar. No, my name is Connell, but I do smoke a lot of cigars. Might as well be called a Cigar. But my name is Connell, the Cigar DM, and that's what I got going on. All right. That's fake. It doesn't count. It will not be 4 p.m. Saturday when we start. I'm inside, so. That doesn't stop me. How does Connell manage to stream on VHS? You know, one of these days we'll have to take a, a drive into Pekin and just see the tech level, of what it used to be like in 1988. And that's what they're trying to passively shove onto those people in that town. Because it I have uh, Al Gore in the, uh, in the basement. Remember, he's the one who invented the internet. Or that congressman who, who said, we can't have too many... Uh, channel uh, uh, things out there, too many different networks because the internet is full of tubes. And if you get too many people and it blocks the tubes, if you don't believe me, look this up. Yeah, that movie's the scariest movie I've ever seen. That's why I recommended it. I, I love that movie. I saw that movie back in 93 when it was released, and I thought it was one of the smartest alien films I've ever watched in my life. And I, I still think it's one of the those movies that when you watch it, the first hour and a half, where they're, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, it's been out since 93, so it's your fault for not watching it. But uh, Travis Walton gets abducted out in the Pacific Northwest by a group of aliens. And his friends 
are there for the first hour and a half of this movie, which spans about two to three weeks. They're talking about like, no, this guy, he just got abducted by UFO. And the, the investigators that are out there, pretty high level guys. And they're, they're talking about, we don't think that he disappeared. We think that this, oh, well, he's like, it was Arizona. It seems like a PNW. Sorry. The investigators that are out there looking for Travis Walton keep saying that this doesn't seem like a case where you guys just lost him to a UFO. We think you killed him and buried him. And you'll be watching this movie, and after about an hour and 15 minutes in, you'll seriously question yourself, like, do you actually think that they maybe did kill him? And we'll see at the very end of the movie a flashback to where it shows him chopping up Travis's body. Because they do a very good job of convincing you that the authorities are nonplussed about this story. They're, they're just not impressed. And it's it's fairly just, it, it's interactive with the fact that it plays on your mind in so many different ways. And then the finale starts. And when I say the finale starts, uh, Travis is found. And they bring him home and he's not quite right. He's got bruising on his face. And everybody's having a party for Travis. Yeah, he's back. And the, the authorities are like, what the fuck is this? What's going on? And they don't understand that, like, his best friend went out looking for him in the middle of the night and finds Travis two, three towns over, totally naked, in a phone booth. And they get him to safety. And now he's interacting with people 72 hours later. And as he's in this party, he's just overwhelmed and he retreats to laying under a table and he kicks the table. He's having a flashback and he starts feeling the maple syrup drip onto his hands. And that's where you get to see what he interprets that he experienced. And it's a very good movie, but the, the facts surrounding that movie of what happened in real life um you if you listen to Travis speak at first he's in the, the 80s he's talking about this encounter and he's hostile to the aliens and now in the 2000 teens he's telling people like you know when I first got returned I was still pissed off at him but they abducted me because I got hit by the beam and they thought they hurt me they thought they killed me at first and so they took me with them and they did a bunch of tests on me. And in retrospect, I'm thinking about this. I honestly feel that the aliens didn't want to hurt me. I think that they took a few samples of me. Like, did we kill them? Well, maybe we can make some of this later. Because that's usually what aliens do. They take like a few skin samples, hair samples. If they killed you, they take uh, things like parts of your liver, your, your lips, orifices, eyes. And, and intestine and that in the human mutilations tab of your google search human mutilations you'll find it but uh travis doesn't have any malice to alien abductors now but if you've not seen that movie fire in the sky or you've not discussed it or or had a discussion of it i'm just throwing this little button on there because it is a movie that you want to discuss it is a movie that you want to explore with people because it does do a lot of questioning of our grasp of reality. And Travis is walking proof of that. And I know that sounds kind of disgusting. That might sound a little bit just flamboyant. But he's never disputed the fact he, he believes firmly what happened. And his friends <laughs> were test when they did a lie detector test on them years later. Not Even during the time. during the during the the initial disappearance, they were all tested twice. They, they were questionable yeah. results. No, they were also the lie detector test was run on them, and they all passed with flying colors. Uh, the the final test they passed with flying flying colors, and it'll it, it reiterates that in the final thirty seconds of the movie, you see that after it fades to black, it throws the text on screen. The final test of a uh, lie detector test, everybody passed. They, they had no shadow of a doubt that what they witnessed was was true. And it makes for an interesting discussion. Is it, are we on? 
Hey, well, since you know so much about it, Bruce, why don't you join us this Sunday if you have the time? More the merrier. Uh, after I finish with Malik with uh, McKinney, Mockney, I'll I'll do that. I will definitely do that. Uh, Malachi, there's about three books from Strieber you want to read. Communion, Transformation, and Majestic. Mm -hmm. And if you get to Majestic, uh, understand that, that book is a fictional... There is a fictional piece, but a lot of the events that have happened were placed in this fiction because of names and places and dates and it's an interesting thing i believe streber i really do anybody else have anything to add before we shut down for the night on our discussion which we didn't talk too much about it but i i think we did because we're discussing can keeping in communication with players and that if you use a phone or voxer or discord or gilded or if you just like walk to their house, you're still dead. And then you walk away. <laughs> I think I think that's important. I think you need to do that if you're not going to be playing in the next two days. Anybody have anything else to add? I'm still waiting for Jay to uh, run his next campaign that takes three years every Tuesday from six to ten. <laughs> Yeah, um, that, that, that requires time. One hey. of the things I don't have a hell of a lot of right now. I'm a patient man. I'm in patience. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have the time or the patience to uh, make that happen yet. All right. All right. Oh, after Table Breakers, there's a good chance for all those who are out there who know where to find me, I will be doing the after party. Okay. Uh, probably for about two hours, so come hang out with me. Most likely shadow and see what kind of trouble we can get into. One last thing uh, for those of you out there who are into the paranormal, the supernatural ghosts and, and werewolves and UFOs and psychic powers and all that good stuff. Um, look us up Saturday night after the shadow chat over on Nathan Allen's channel. You can find him on my channel. Um, where we do a paranormal show every Saturday night, um, starting roughly, I think, 7, 8 o'clock avocado time. Uh, make sure you, you give them a look if you're into that kind of thing, because it's, it's always it's always at least interesting. And uh, Nathan's picked up some, some pretty cool paranormal investigation equipment that you might want to check out uh, his videos on. And hopefully I'll see you guys all there. That sounds pretty okay. It's always a lot of fun. And for, for me, um, it's a nice way to to cleanse the palate of all the, the game-related material that I do all week long, just nonstop game stuff. And then at the end of the week, I just get to, you know, chill out with one of my other passions, which is the paranormal UFOs, ancient civilizations and you know things like that and my good friend nathan is is a great guy to to, to chat about he's those nice things he I, I don't have anything negative to say about nathan now he's a really good guy yeah. and i'm glad he took my advice and started this show uh because it's you know the, you know where it's one of my hobbies this is like his main hobby and mind you he is you know, uh, he's, he's got some other things that he does, but that's like his main hobby. And while I've been studying this stuff since I was Jack's age, you know, there have been times that I didn't, you know, decades that I just did other things and didn't, you know, obviously I've, I'll watch shows and stuff like that. But reading books and looking into it, that's only been a recent thing since, you know, Jack was born. I started getting back into studying that stuff. Um, because, you know, before that I was, you know, doing grown up stuff and life, etc. <clears throat> it's okay, Cal. You can always watch it later. I'm going to, if nobody has anything further. No. We'll no. This at the cusp of two hours. 
and I want to thank everybody, every single one of you for being here. Uh, Man of War 665, Neighbor of the Beast, you didn't have to, but I appreciate you supporting the channel. I'll be making sure to get that set on the <coughs> Warrior Project, because those guys, they, they need it more than I do. But I appreciate you all, and be well. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night.